So another thing that we will frequently do with our servers is set up system virtualization. So we'll have one machine running as a host computer and it will run multiple other virtual servers or virtual machines inside this virtual environment. Now in Linux, we can do that using KVM, which is our uh, kernel virtual machine uh, management tool. So that's what we're going to set up. Now, a couple of things here. Number one, if you're doing this on physical on a physical computer, you need to make sure that your processor has virtualization extensions enabled and you can set that in BIOS. If you are doing this like I am in a Hyper-V virtual machine, you can see right here I'm running Hyper-V, you need to enable nested virtualization. And if you look on this channel and go find another video dealing with enabling nested virtualization, be aware that it's something you need to do with the machine turn the virtual machine turned off and in PowerShell on the host computer. You also need to make sure that you've given your virtual machine uh, several virtual processes to work with. In this case, I have four set up and I have virtualization enabled. Now, you can verify if you have what you need in uh, your Ubuntu server by running this command. So egrep, I'm going to look for something and I'm going to search for uh, either uh, VMX or and I just lost what I was looking for, uh, SVM, there we go, SVM. And you're gonna look for this in forward slash proc, forward slash CPU info. And this is basically gonna count up every instance of VMX or SVM in that proc CPU info. And basically what we're doing is we're looking for a number here that's greater than zero. And if we have that, then great we have what we need we can see multiple um, virtual processors which means we can now run system virtualization so now that i've done that i'm going to sudo apt update just to make sure i have the most current uh, packages cached and this should just take a second to run i'm going to worry about the upgrade later but in order for this to work, I'm going to install several different pieces. So it's going to be sudo apt install. And here's going to be the list. And you may want to pause the video and make sure that you get them all in. So I want bridge dash utils. I want the lib vert dash daemon. In this case, I also want libvert-clients. I need QEMU. There we go. Uh, virtualization is actually done as a combination of KVM and QEMU. So dash KVM. I want the QEMU. QEMU, there we go, dash system. I want SSH dash ask pass and I want vert dash manager so this is our entire list the uh, the first set of them have to deal with the tools needed for us to host uh, kernel virtual machines and then vert manager is going to be the virtualization manager that virtual machine manager that we're going to use to manage the system I'm going to hit enter and make sure that I got them all right and yes, now this is going to take a little while to install. So rather than sitting here and waiting for it, I'm going to go ahead and pause this video and uh, you can pick it and we'll pick it up again once we get uh, a little farther along in the install process. Okay, so after just a few minutes, the install process is done. And I can verify that this is working by doing a systemctl, and I want to look at the status of libvert, spell it without the F, libvertd. And we can see that it is active and running. Okay, great. Now, it is technically possible to do some of your virtual machine management from the command line. But honestly, it's not that easy to do. So Vert Manager, the software that I said we were going to use in order to manage our virtual machine, is actually a GUI software. So I need to put a GUI 
onto my system here. So this is going to be another longer install. Our command is going to be sudo apt install ubuntu-desktop and hit enter. Now this is going to do a fairly good sized install. 926 newly installed packages. We're going to need another 591 megabytes of archives and we're going to use another almost two gigabytes of space. This is why we, one of the reasons why we don't run the Ubuntu desktop on servers unless we're running virtual machines, in which case we need that tool, so we go ahead and do it. So I'm going to say yes to my install, and once again, this is going to take a little while, so I'm going to go ahead and pause my video again, and then we're going to pick it up here again once we get to something interesting. So if you're following along, go ahead and start the install and then just pause the video until we get to the next step. Okay, as we're doing our install, we finally get to this point where it tells us incompatible PAM profiles are selected. We're just going to hit OK with that and continue on with the install. Uh, we're about 75% of the way through, so I'm going to go ahead and pause it until we get the rest of the way through with our install. Okay, so our installation is now finished. We're going to go ahead and start using the Start X. We're going to start the uh, desktop environment. So it starts loading. Screen lock is disabled. That's fine. We don't need the GNOME, GNOME Display Manager. So we're just going to click on Start Setup. And we're going to go through the rest of these little setting screens. And at this point, uh, we need to restart our virtual machine. So I'm going to come up here to my start and power and restart. Other users are logged in. Yep, that's good. We're going to go ahead and click restart. And that's going to restart everything now that we've got our uh, desktop installed. So we run through the typical restart, which is what we're seeing right here. And this is the point at which we would normally get our login screen. But now notice it jumps up, and, or the, um, let me rephrase that, it starts the desktop environment instead. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and log in using my uh, base account. And we are now in the Ubuntu desktop. Now, all of our software is still running in the background, all of our server software. We've just now added a desktop, which has become our default login point. Now, to access my terminal, I can go to my show application. And you'll see several things here already attached or already built in. But I want to go to my terminal. So I'm going to click on my little activities down here and I'm going to type terminal and this brings up our terminal environment Now I actually don't need that for this but I want you to see how to get access to it because really the only server application that has a GUI management tool for us is going to be KVM the virtual machine manager so everything else we're still going to admin the same way we're still going to edit the config files we're still going to stop and restart our services all of that stuff this way we have been doing all along except that now we're doing it through that terminal rather than logging in to a terminal directly so I want to find my virtual machine manager so I'm going to type VIR and here is my virtual machine manager uh, software updater, we're going to worry about that later. So it's connecting to QEMU-KVM. And it looks like it's connected. If we get an error that it's not, let me go back to my terminal here real quick. And we, would, we could verify that by using the systemctl status lib vert d, the same thing we did before, to verify that it is up and running. 
So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here because I'm done with that. So now I'm connected. So I can go to File and Add New Connection. And this is going to let me connect to a hypervisor. And I can pick which type of hypervisor. Notice Zen, Libvirt LXC. We see a bunch of them here. We can select the username, the host, uh, the host name if we're connecting to a remote host over SSH. So we can manage different hypervisors from this one tool. So let's go to, which by the way, I could have set up um, the virtualization that we did from command line and not bothered to do the virtual machine manager and then used another device that I had a desktop on, install virtual machine manager on it there and then connect to my system remotely. So since I've done it here, I'm going to create a new virtual machine just to walk you through the process. So I can choose to install using local media, using a network install, import an existing disk image, do a manual install. I can set my architecture types that I want to emulate here. So I'm going to do a manual install, and I actually don't have an ISO to install from here, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, just go fake it, basically. So I'm going to hit forward, and I'm going to choose which type of virtual machine. Now, had I put in an ISO, it would have tried to figure that out for me. But since it didn't, I'm going to go ahead and let's say I'm doing OpenSUSE. So I'm going to type OpenSUSE, and this gives me all of my options that it thinks I might do. So I'm going to do OpenSUSE Leap 15.5. Now that actually doesn't install the virtual machine for me. It doesn't set the software. Basically what it does is it tries to define if this is what I'm using, what kinds of things would we logically want here? So I'm going to click forward and you're going to see it assumes that if I'm running OpenSUSE, this is how much memory I'm going to need. This is how many CPUs I'm going to need. This is how much is available. I'm going to go ahead and click forward. Uh, enable storage for this virtual machine. I can choose not to and just do a live CD boot. I'm going to set, um, let's set 20 gigabytes. Now I can actually do more than that. Uh, I can do more than what's available here. Notice I have 49.1 gigabytes available in the default location. Uh, I can also set custom storage here back up. I can do more than what it has here. It's just that I could potentially run out of storage space. So I'm going to leave it at 20 and click forward. Here's my name for the machine. I can change that. Uh, network selection. I can run. I haven't set up a bridge device. We can do that later on. I'm going to set this up using my default NAT and I'm going to click finish. And this is going to create a virtual machine for me. And yeah, I'm going to allow that. And then it's automatically going to try to start it, which I have no bootable device for it. So that's not going to get very far. So I'm going to go ahead and force this off. I can't send a shutdown code, so I'm going to force it off. And then I'm going to come here to my uh, virtual hardware details. And this is where I can edit this. So my operating system, my OS information, performance information, number of CPUs that are available, uh, amount of memory that's available, boot options. And here I can configure anything that I need for my virtual machine. So that's how we will set up uh, KVM and how we will create a virtual machine once we get KVM up and running.